science fiction. A pearl of air by Fritz Libya. The dark star passed, bringing the eternal night and turning history incredible myth into a single generation. Pa sent me out to get a fetched a pearl of air. I just about scooped it full, and most of the warmth had leaked from my fingers when I saw the thing. You know, at first I thought it was a young lady. Yes, a beautiful young lady face, all glowing in the dark. And looking at me with the full fifth floor of the opposite apartment, which hereabouts is a floor above the white blanket of the frozen air. I've never seen a live young lady before, except the old magazines. This is that just a kid, a Mars, pretty sick and miserable. It gave me such a start, I dropped the pail. Who wouldn't, knowing everybody on Earth was dead except Pa, Ma, Sis, and you? Even at that, I don't suppose I should have been surprised. We all see things now and then. Ma was pretty, saw some pretty bad ones to judge for the way we, she saw, she bugs her eyes at nothing, just screams and screams and huddles back against the blankets, hanging against the nest, around the nest. Pa says it's natural. We should react like that sometimes. When I come to pale and took, could look again at the opposite apartment, I got an idea that Ma might be feeling at these times, for I saw it wasn't a young lady at all, but simply a light. A tiny light that moves stealthily from window to window, just as one of the cruel little stars had come down at the airless sky to investigate why Earth has gone away from the sun, and maybe to hunt down something to torment or terrify, now that Earth didn't have the sun for action. I tell you, the sake of, of it gave me the creeps. I just stood there shaking and almost froze my feet. I did frost my, my helmet. So solid on the inside, I couldn't have seen the light even if I came out on one of the windows to get me. Then I had the wit to go back inside. Pretty soon I was feeling my familiar way for the first day. Or blankets and the rugs. Pa I got hung around a slow down the escape of air from the nest. I was quite I wasn't quite so scared. Then to hear the tick tocking of the clocks in the nest. And and I knew I was getting back into the air. Could so sound outside the vacuum, of course. My mind was still crawling and, and easy. I pushed for the last blankets. Pa got them face with a manual foil to hold in the heat. I came into the nest. Let me tell you about the nest. It's low and snug. Just room for four of us and our things. Floor is covered with thick woolly ranks. Three of these sides of blankets and the blanket's roofing is touched, it, it'll touch Pa's head. It tells me it's inside a much bigger room, but I've never have seen the real walls or ceiling. Against one of the blanket walls is a big set of shelves with tools and books. Another stuff on top of it, home roll clocks. Pa's very fuss a bit keeping it around. He must never forget time. Without sun or moon, it would be, be easy to do. Full full with blankets all over set around the fireplace. In which there is a fire that must never go out. It keeps us from freezing and does a lot more besides. One of us has always watched it. Some of the clocks are alarm. And we can use them to remind us. In the early days, there was only Ma to take turns with Pa. I think that's when she gets difficult. But how now there's me to help, and Sis too. Pa, who's the chief guardian of the fire. Though I always think of him that way. A tall man sitting cross legged, frowning anxiously at the fire. His linen in place golden is light. Ever so often, carefully placing on its place of coal, with a blade heap beside it. Pa tells me there used to be guardians of the fire. Sometimes in the very old days. Special virgins, he called them. Though there was unfrozen air all around them. You didn't really need one. He was sitting just the way now. Just that way now. So he got up quick to take the pail from me and bore me out for loitering. He spotted my frozen helmet right off. 
That roused Ma and she joined in picking on me. We were always trying to get the load off her feelings. Pies planes shut her up pretty fast. Sit let off a couple of silly squeals too. Pa paddled it out of air into a twist of cloth. Now it was inside the nest. You could really feel its coldness. It just seemed to suck the heat out of everything. Even the flames cringed away from it as Pa put it down close by the fire. Yet it that glimmery white stuff in the bell keeps us alive, it slowly melts and vanishes and refreshes the nest and feeds the fire. The blankets keep it from being far too fast. Pa like to seal the whole place, but he can't. Building too earthquake twisted. And besides, he has to leave the chimney open for smoke. Pa says air is a tiny monocles that fly away like a flash. Is it there isn't something to stop if there's not isn't something to stop them. We have to watch sharp not to let the air run low. Pa always keeps us a big big res- reserve fly with his blanket in his buckets behind the first blankets, along with extra coal and cans of food and other things, such as pails of snow to melt look for water. We have to go way down to the bottom floor for that stuff. When it's a mean trip I get it through a door to uh, to a door to the outside. You see, when the earth has got cold, all the water in the fair froze, made a blanket ten feet thick, so, ev- so also everywhere, and then down on top of them dropped the crystals of frozen air, making another white blankly sixty or seventy feet thick, maybe. Of course, all the parts of the air didn't freeze, and snow came, and snowed down at the same time. First to drop out was the carbon air, dark side. When you're shuddering for water, you have to make sure you don't go too high. Get any of that stuff mixed in. For it would put you to sleep, maybe for good, and make the fire go out. Then next there's the nitrogen. It doesn't count one way or the other. Though it's the biggest part of the blanket. On the top of it, that's an easier get at. Which is lucky for us. There was the oxygen that keeps us alive. Pa says we live better when think kings ever did. Bringing pure oxygen. But we never we were used to it and didn't notice. Finally in the top very top is a slick of liquid helium, which is funny stuff. All these gases and neat separate layers, just like a pussy's carefree. Pa laughingly says, Whatever that is. I burst in to tell them all. But what I'd seen so soon, as I ducked out my helmet, I was climbing, climbing out of my suit. I got loose. Right away, Ma got nervous. I began making eyes, and I entry slipped in the blankets, wringing her hands together, the hands where she lost three fingers for frostbite inside the good one, as usual. I could tell that Pa was annoyed at me scarring her, and wanted to explain it all the way quickly, yet could see that I wasn't falling. You watch this like for some time, son? He asked when I finished. I didn't say anything about first thinking it was a young lady's face. Somehow that part embarrassed me. Long enough to, for it to pass five windows and go next floor. It didn't look, it look stray with electricity or calling liquid or starlight focused by glowing crystal or anything like that. He wasn't just making up these ideas. Odd things happen in the world just about us. As cold as it may be, just when you think matter might be frozen dead, it takes a strange new life, a slimy stuff, comes crawling towards the nest like an animal, sniffing for stuff it heat. That's liquid helium. And once, when I was little, I bought lightning, not even Pa could figure out where it came from, hit the nearby stable and crawled up and down it for the weeks till the glow finally died. Not... Like anything I've ever saw, I told him. He stood for a moment frowning. Then, I'll go out with you, and you show it to me, he said. Pa raised a howl at the idea. Be left alone, sis joined in. To the park went then. He started climbing into the outdoor clothes. Mine had been warming by the fire. Pa made them. They were a plastic headpiece. There was one big double-duty transparent parent, food cans. They had kept heat and air in, and they would place the air for a little while, long enough for our trips for water and coal and food and so on. Pa and Ma started moaning again. I've always known there's something outside there. Where you get us? 
I've heard it for years, something that's part of the cold. I hate this little world film, what's destroyed in this? I mean, watch, it's been watching this all this time, and now it's coming after us. I'll get you, you, and then come, it'll get you, and then come for me. Don't go, hurry. Pa had everything on but his helmet. He knelt by the fireplace and then reached in, shook the long metal rod and goes to the chimney and knocks off the ice and keeps going, keeps trying to clog it. Once a week he goes up to the roof to check it out. But if it's working all right, that's our worst trip and Pa won't let me make it alone. Sis, Pa said quietly, come down, come watch the fire, keep an eye on that there too. If it gets low, it doesn't seem to be boiling fast enough. Fetch another blanket, some behind the bank blanket bucket. From, fetch from another bucket from behind the blanket. But mind your hands, use a cloth to pick up the blanket bucket. So sis quit helping Ma be frightened. I came over and did as she was told. Ma quietened down pretty suddenly. Through her eyes are still kind of wild as she watched Ma fix on his helmet tight and pick up a pail and the two of us got of us go out. Pa led away. I took hold of his belt. It's a funny thing. I'm not afraid to let go by myself. Um, when I hear Pa's alone, I always want to be a hold of him. Habit, I guess. There's no denying this time I was a bit scared. You see, it is this way. We know that everything is dead out there. Pa heard the last radio voices fade way years ago. Been some of the last folk die who weren't so as lucky as well protected as us. <laughs> so we knew about what that if there was something groping around there, it couldn't be anything human or friendly. Besides that, there's a thing that comes with it. Sometimes it's always been night, cold night. Pa says there used to be some of that feeling in the old days, but when everything, every morning the sun would come, chase it away, I have to take his word for that, for never remembering the sun, of being anything more than a big star. You see, I was a born when the spark star snatched us away from the sun. By now it's dragged us out beyond the orbit of planet or Pluto. Pa says I've taken us further out all the time. I found myself wondering whether there was might be something dark star that wanted us, and is that is why we, it had captured the Earth. Just when we came out to the end of the corridor, I followed the par out to, into the balcony. I don't know what the city looked like in the old days. It is now, but now it's beautiful. The starlight lets you see it pretty well. There's, there's quite a bit of light. In those steady points sparkling, speculating, speculating speckling in the darkness above. Past the stars we used to twinkle once, but that was because there was air. We on a hill the chimney suddenly plain drops away. From us and when it flattens out, cut into snake squares. My trough that used to be streets. I sometimes make my mashed potatoes look like it before I pour in the gravy. So taller buildings push up to the feathery plain, topped by brand new caps of air crystals. Like the fair hood, Ma wears only whiter. On these buildings you can see the darker squares of windows, outlined by white dashes of air crystals. Some of them are by a slant, and for many of the buildings are pretty badly twisted. But the quakes and all the rest that happened, the dark star captured the earth. Here and there, a few icicles hang. Water icicles for the few first days of cold. Other icicles of frozen air that melted on roofs and dripped and froze again. Sometimes one of these icicles still catches the light of the star and sends it to you so brightly you think the star has swooped into society. It's one of the things that Pa had been thinking of when I told him about the light, but I had to thought for the bit myself first and known it wasn't so. So he touched his helmet to mine so we could talk easier. And he asked me to point out the windows to him. But there wasn't any light moving around inside that now. Or anything else. To my surprise, Pa didn't bail me out and tell me I'd been seeing things. He looked like quite... He looked all around quite a while for Philly's pal. Just as we were going inside, he whipped around about morning as if to take some peepee thing off guard. I could feel it too. The old piece was gone. There's something lurking out there, watching, waiting, getting ready. Inside, he said to me, touching helmets, if you see something like that again, 
so don't tell the others. Your ma is sort of nervous these days. We owe her all the feeling of safety we can give her. Once it was when your sister was born. I was ready to give up and die, but your mother kept me going, trying. The other time, she kept the fire going a whole week, or myself when I was sick. Nursed me and took care of the two of you too. You know the game we sometimes play, sitting in the square, and there's tossing a ball around. Carries it like a ball, son. Person can hold it so long, there's you got to toss it to someone else. When it's tossed your way, you must you got to catch it and hold it tight. I hope you'll be someone else to toss it. So when you get tired of being brave, you're talking to me. The way you made me feel grown up and good. But it didn't wipe away the thing outside from the back of my mind. The fact that Pa took it seriously. It's hard to hide your feelings for such a for about such a thing. We got back to this and shook, took off our, our, our clothes. Pa laughed about it all and told it, them it was nothing. And kidded me for having such an imagination. His words fell flat. He didn't convince Ma or Sis any more than he did me. He looked for a minute like we were all fumbling the courage ball. Something was going to be done. And almost before I knew what I was going to say, I heard myself asking Pa to tell us about old days and how it happened. He sometimes didn't mind telling his story, and since I was sure I'd like to listen to it, he got my idea. So he all settled around the fire in a wink, and Ma pushed up some cans to fall for supper, and Pa began. Before he did, though, I noticed him casually getting a hammer from his shelf and laying it down beside him. The same old story as always. I think I could recite the main thread of it in my sleep. A pa always puts in a new detail too and keeps proving it in spots. It tells how Earth had been swinging around the sun ever since study warm. The people go on fixing to make money in wars, have a good good time and get power and treat each other right or wrong. Then without warning this there comes charging up space, it's this star, this burned out sun, except that's everything. You know I find it hard to believe in this, in the way if you people felt any more than I can believe in the war of so many number of them. Imagine people getting ready to for a horrible sort of war they were cooking up. One day even is wish last wishing it would ever do so to end their nervousness. And it would all folks didn't have to hang up together a pool very bit of wolf just to keep alive and how can they have hope to end danger any more than we can hope to end the cold sometimes I think Pa exaggerates and makes things too black he cross he's cross with us once in a while he's probably cross with all other folks still some of the things I read in the old magazines sound pretty wild he must be right he may be right The dark stars Paul Pa went on telling. It rushed in pretty fast and there wasn't much time to get ready. Again he tried to keep it secret from most people, but the truth came out. That was that what with earthquakes and floods, imagine oceans of frozen water. People seen stars blotted out by something or clear light. First off they thought it would hit the sun, then they thought it would hit the earth. It even the start of a rush to get a place called China, it's because people thought the star would hit the other side on the other side. But they found it wasn't going to hit either side. It was going to get, come very close to Earth. Most of the other planets were on the other side of the sun and didn't get involved. The sun, new keeper, fought out over the earth for a little while, pulling its way. And that, like two dogs growling over a bone, Pa discovered it at the time. Then the only cold one had carried us off. The sun got a consolation for his own. At the last minute, he managed to hold on to the moon. There was a time when the monster earthquakes and floods, 20 times worse than everything before. It's also the time of the big jerk, as Pa calls it. When all the earth got yanked suddenly, but as Pa was done to me once or twice, grabbing me by the collar to do it. Well, they've been just sitting too far from the fire. You see, the dark star was going through space faster than the sun. Its opposite direction, it had to wrench the world considerably in order to take it away. Big Church didn't last long. It's over as soon as the earth has settled down, knew it around the dark star. But it's pretty terrible while it lasted. Past it, all sorts of cliffs and buildings toppled, oceans sloped over swamps and sandy beach deserts. 
gave great sliding surges and that buried nearby lands. Earth was almost choked over his atmosphere blanket, and the air got so thin in spots that people kneeled down and over fainted. Although, of course, at the same time, but he getting knocked down by a big jerk, maybe the bones broke or skulls cracked. We often asked Pa how people acted during time, whether they were scared or brave or crazy or stunned, or thought he sort of. Uh, but he's sort of leery subject. He was again tonight. He says he's almost, mostly too busy to notice. You see, Pa and some scientist friends of his have figured out what was going to happen. If known it, we'd get captured or air would freeze. They kept... They have been working like mad to fix up a place with the airtight walls and doors, insulation against the cold, and big supplies of food and water and fuel. Fuel and water and bottled air. But a place that got smashed in the last earthquakes. And all Pa's friends were killed then. And in the big jerk, so he had to start over, a thrown in this together, quick, without any advantages, just getting like, any stuff he could lay his hands on. I guess he's pretty, telling pretty much the truth when he says he doesn't have any time to keep an eye on how other folks behaved. Even then, or in the big freeze that followed, followed very quickly, quick, you know, how both because the dark star was pulling us away very fast, because Earth's rotation have slowed in the tugs of war. So the rights of ten old nights along. Still, I had no idea of some of the things that happened, the frozen folk were seen, few of them in other rooms of our buildings, others clustered where the furnaces and the basements where we will go for coal. In some of the rooms, an old man sits stiff in a chair, with an arm in its leg and splinters. Another man, a woman, are huddled together in a bed, and heats are covers over them. You see their heads peeking out close together. In another beautiful woman is sitting with a pile of wraps huddled around her, looking, looking hopefully toward the door, still waiting for someone who never came back with warmth and food. They're still and stiff as statues, of course, but it's just like, but just like life. Pa showed them to me once, in quick weeks of his flashlights, when he still had a flare supply of batteries and could afford to waste a little light. It scared me pretty bad, made my heart pound, especially the young lady. Now we part telling stories for the upteenth time to make our minds of off take our minds off our other scare. I got the thing in the frozen folk again. All of a sudden I got an idea that scared me worse than anything yet. You see, I just remembered the face I thought I'd seen in the window. I've forgotten about the count of trying to hide it from the others. What I asked myself if the frozen folk were coming to life. What well, if they were like liquid helium? I got a new lease of life and started crawling together towards the heat when they thought its manacles thought that it ought to freeze solid forever. Or oh, like electricity moves endlessly when it's just about as cold as that. What well, if they were never growing cold, the temperature creeping down the last few degrees to the last zero and mysteriously woken the frozen folk to life? Not warm blooded life, but something icy and horrible. There was a worse idea than one about something coming down from the dark star to get us. Or maybe I thought both ideas could maybe be true. Something coming down from the dark star and made us frozen folk move, using them to do its work. They would fit with both things I've seen. Beautiful young lady, a moving starlight, light. Late night. A frozen folk reminds a dark star behind her undoing eyes, creeping, crawling, sniffing their way, following the nest to the waste, following the heat to the nest. I tell you, that thought gave me the very bad turn. I wanted very badly to tell the others of my fears. I remember what Pa had said, I clenched my teeth and didn't speak. With all things, we were all sitting very still, when even the fire was burning silently. There was just the sound of Pa's voice in the clocks. Then from beyond the pilot blankets, I thought I heard a turning noise, my skin tightened all over me. Pa was turning me, but I knew very early years in this, and how they come up to the place where he philosophized. So, I asked myself then, he said, what's the use of going on? What's the use of dragging it out for a few years? Why put on the doom resistance of, of hard work and cold and loneliness? The human race is done. The earth is done. Why not give up? I asked myself. All of a sudden, I got the answer. Oh, again, I heard the noise. 
loud this time. A kind of uncertain, softly afraid. Coming closer, I couldn't breathe. I've always just a bit been in the business of working hard and fighting. A cold pass, so it was saying. Yes, yeah, always been a lonely place, millions of miles from the next planet. No matter how long the human race might have lived, the end would have come over some night. These things didn't matter. The matter is that life is good. It's pretty lonely texture, like some rich cloth of fur or petals of flowers. You've seen pictures of these, but I must can't describe how you feel or the fires glow. It makes some, everything else worthwhile. That's it. Is true for the last man as the first. Still, the steps keep shuffling closer. It seemed to me that the most blanket trembled. I bulged a little, just as if it were being burned into my imagination. I kept seeing these peering, frozen eyes. It's right here, so right then. And there, Pa went on. And now I could tell that he heard the step too. It was around talking loud, as if maybe couldn't wouldn't hear them. Right then and there, I told myself, I was going on as if we had all an eternity ahead of us. I have children, teach them all I could, and get them a real read books and plan for the future, try to enlarge the seal, the nest, so that I could keep everything beautiful growing. I kept a night my feeling of wonder, even at the cold and darkness for the stars. Then the blanket actually did move and lift. And there was a bright star somewhere behind it. Pa's voice stopped. His eyes turned to the burning slit. His hand went out to it touched and gripped the handle of the hammer beside him. In for the blanket stepped a beautiful young lady. She stood there looking at the strangest way. She carried something bright and unwrinkled in her hand. And two of her faces peered over her shoulders. Men's faces white and staring. Oh, my heart couldn't have stopped for more than four, five beats before I realised he was wearing a suit and helmet like Pa's homemade ones. Only fancy, and when the men were two, the frozen folk certainly wouldn't be wearing those. Also noticed that the bright thing in her hand was just a kind of flashlight. Silence kept on a while. I swallowed as hard as a couple of times. And after there was all sorts of jabbering and commotion. They're simply people, you see. We haven't been the only ones to five. Just we thought so, for natural enough reasons. These three people would survive, and quite a few others with them. And he, when we found out how they survived, Pa let out the biggest with a joy. They were from Los Angeles, but getting their heat and power from atomic energy, just using uranium and plutonium extended for bombs, enough to go to foul go on for a thousand years. They were a regular little airtight city, which air locks and all. They grew even generated electric light and grew plants and animals by it. At that, Pa let out a second whoop, waking Ma from her fate. But if we were fabricated at them, they were double fabricated at us. One of the men kept saying, but it's impossible, I tell you. You, have a, you can't maintain the air supply without having an edict, silly. It's simply impossible. There was hours after he got his helmet off, without using I am. Meanwhile, the young lady kept looking round at us, as if there were saints, and telling us we'd done something amazing, and something she, suddenly she broke down and cried. They were scouting around for survivors, but they never expected to find any in a place like this. They had rocket ships at Los Vegas and plenty for chemical fuel. As for liquid nitrogen, all they had to do was go out and shovel the air blanket at the top level. So after they got things going smoothly at Los Vegas, which had taken years, they decided to get to make some trips to a likely places where there might be some other survivors. No good trying a long distance radio signals of course since there was no atmosphere to carry them around the curve of the earth well they found the other colonies at Allegron and Brookhaven and way around the world at Hannibal and Tabundovan and now they're giving the old city a look but really expecting to find anything but had an instrument that not- noticed the faintest heat waves it told them there was something warm down there so they landed to investigate of course we hadn't heard them land since there was no air to carry the sound they had to investigate around quite a while before finding us the instrument had given them a wrong steer they wasted some time in the building across the street <coughs> By now, all five kit adults were taking like, talking like 60. Pa was demonstrating to the men how he worked the fire and got rid of the ice in the chimney and all that. Pa perked up wonderfully, was showing the young lady how cooking and sewing stuff. Even talking about how the women dressed at the service. 
The stranger marveled at everything and praised it for the skies. I could tell from the way they wrinkled their noses. They found the nest a bit funny, but they never mentioned that at all, and just asked bushels of questions. In fact, there's so much talking and excitement that Pal forgot about things. It wasn't until they were all getting groggy that he looked and found the air. They all boiled away in the pal. He got another bucket of air quick from behind the bucket of blankets. Of course, they started all laughing and chipping again. The newcomers even got a little drunk. They weren't used to so much oxygen. Funny thing, though, I didn't... Didn't do much talking at all, and Sis hung on to Ma all the time and hid her face. Which everybody looked at her. I felt pretty uncomfortable and disturbed myself. Even about the young lady, glimpsing her outside there, I had all sorts of mushy faults, but now just embarrassed and scared of her. Even though she tried to be nice as, everything, as anything to me, I sort of wished they were all quite crowning the nest and let us be alone, get our feelings straightened out. Then the newcomers began to talk about how all things are for the, all going to Los Amos, if they had taken for granted. I could see that something of the same feeling struck Ma and Pa too, but, a very, but Pa got very silent all of a sudden. Pa kept telling the young woman, but I won't know how to act there. I haven't got any clothes. Strangers are puzzled like anything at first. Then, but then they got the idea. A park saying, could say, I just haven't been right, seen right to let the fire go, this fire go out. Well, the strangers are gone. They were coming back. It hadn't been decided yet when that would happen. Meaning this will be kept us up. That what one of the strangers called a survival school. Or maybe we will join the pioneers who are going to try to establish a new colony in our area mines, Great Slave Lake, or in the Congo. Of course, now that the stranger's gone, I've been thinking a lot about Los Amos. Those other tremendous colonies. I have a hankering to see them for myself. You ask me, Pa wants to see them too. He's been getting pretty pretty thoughtful, watching Ma and Sis perk up. It happened different now. We know others are alive, he explains to me. It doesn't feel so hopeless anymore. Neither do I, for that matter, for getting, having to carry out the whole responsibility for keeping the human race going. So to speak, it scares a person. I looked around the blanket walls and the fire and the pails of air boiling away. Ma and Sis slipping, sleeping in the... Sleeping in the warmth and flickering light. I'm not going to be easy to leave the nest, I said. Weren't it a cry? Kind of it? Kind of? It's small and it's just the four of us. I get scared out of big places. A lot of strangers. He nodded and got another piece of coal on the fire. Then he looked at a small pile and grinned suddenly. Put a couple of cranfuls on just as if one of the bar births is Christmas. You quickly get over the feeling, son. He said, trouble with the world. Well, it kept getting smaller and smaller to it ended with just the nest. Now it's to be good to have a real huge well again. The way it was in the beginning. I guess he's right. You know, that British young lady will wait for me till I grow up. I'll be 20 in only 10 years' time. In, in, in only 10 years. The end. <laughs>